Here I'll show you how to so easily have Excel automatically update your charts when you add new data to your table. So if you add a row here or a column here, the chart will automatically update without you having to do anything. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. So what I have here is a very simple, tiny data table, product, and then some sales data for the products here. And for the first part of the tutorial, I'll show you the super simple, easy way to have your charts automatically update. In the second part, I will show you a rather complex way to do it that may be useful in some situations. So first, let's go ahead and add our chart. I'm going to put the cursor in the data, go to the Insert tab, select a chart. Let's zoom out a bit so we can see a little better. OK. So now let's say we want to add a new part, ASC-5, sample numbers. Nothing happens. Well, to very easily have it automatically update, all you have to do, put the cursor anywhere in the data, Insert tab, and click Table. That's it. All you have to do, turn your data into a table. When this little window pops up up here, make sure you have checked My Table Has Headers. If you're going to put this on the chart, most likely you have headers. The header data is this first row here, and that's used to define your legend down here in the chart. So make sure the data that's selected is correct. Hit OK. And now our data is formatted as a table. It's a very specific type of format in Excel that gives us lots of features. So let's go ahead and add the new part. Don't worry about that error message. Add some data. And you can see that everything automatically fills in. Let's add another part. All you do, start typing away. Don't worry about that error. Let's just put some data in. Perfect. Now let's try it with another column. Title. And fill in some data. It's as easy as that. Takes almost no time. All you have to do, convert your data into a table format for Excel. So you select the data, go to the Insert tab, click the Table button. That's it. Or you can see the keyboard shortcut there, Control-T. Now let's say that this messes up your formatting. You don't want these stupid little rows here. All you have to do is click in the data table. Then we can go to Design. You'll see this tab appear up here. And go to Table Styles. You can go down here, and you have many different options. But up in the left, you have None. So you can get your data to look just like a normal set of data. Aside from the formatting, once you click in the table on the Design tab, you have many other options for interesting things you can do with your table. Now that's beyond this tutorial, but that's how you can create a chart that will automatically update when you add new data to your data set in Excel. You see it's so, so, so easy, so don't forget, select the data insert table. Now, you're going to especially love what I just showed you once you see the next part of the tutorial. If this works for you, you don't need to watch anymore, but the next part is going to get a little bit complex depending on your skill level. So we're going to do basically the same thing that we did here, but we're going to use dynamic formulas. So what that means is that instead of setting this as a table, we're going to have formulas that will automatically update each piece of data. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. What we have to do here is we have to create dynamic named ranges. That means a named range that has a formula that will automatically resize to fit the data in it. So the formula will be this big, encompass this amount of data initially. Once you add a new value down here, the formula will be that big. It will encompass this set of data. To do that, we use the offset function. Now, what I'm going to do, which is very good practice when building named ranges, is build the formula in the worksheet first where you can see it. Equals offset reference. Now, here, you don't want to select the header of your data. You just want to select the first row of the data. 
and we're going to need to select the part numbers as well as the raw data here. So select this, and for every single range reference, this is so, 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 so important. It's going to save you a ton of headaches. You want to make them absolute. If you don't do that, it will totally get messed up in your named ranges. So that's the reference. That's where the offset function will start. The next one is how many rows do we want to go down from this reference? Zero. We don't want to move anywhere. How many columns do we want to go over from this reference? Zero. We don't want to go anywhere. Next argument is the height. How high do we want this reference? And this is where it gets fun. So we want to use the count function. There are many different count functions. I'm going to use the count a function here. You can see that the count function just counts the number of cells that contain a numbers. If we use the count a, it's the number of cells that are not empty. Open the parentheses. And what you could do here is one of two things. You can select the entire column, or you can select a range within the column. The range within the column needs to be big enough that your data table will never go beyond it. Otherwise, you'll forget that you did this and wonder why your data is not updating correctly later on. If you are in a version of Excel prior to 2007, you're going to need to select the data range. You can't select the entire column. So just make it something like A2 to A500 or A1000, something like that. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select the entire column. And remember to make it an absolute reference. So we hit F4, get the dollar signs. So that means that it won't update when we move the formula. Now, if we're going to count every single cell here, we need to account for the fact that we don't want this first one to be counted because it's not going on the chart for the product names. So what we have to do is minus one. Now, if your chart was not at the top, at the upper left of the table, and we had at the upper left of the worksheet, and we had lots of other cells of data above it, you could subtract those as well. So if you had three cells of data, you might want to do minus three. Or in that case, you might want to, instead of selecting the entire column, start here and select down. So it could be a little bit tricky depending on how your data is set up. But basically, we want to subtract every cell here that is not going to be put in the data set. Once we do that, we are pretty much done. We don't need to select the width because we're only going to be doing the columns here. So we can close the parentheses, hit Enter to make sure that it enters correctly, and perfect. Now we have our dynamic formula. Let's go put it in a named range. I'm going to select it, copy it. Then let's go to Formulas, Name Manager. Let's hit New. In the name, let's call this Product. That's how we're going to reference this. And down here, we just simply paste the formula. Hit OK. And now you can see our named range, product. And when we click down here under where it says refers to, you will see that it highlights our data over here, cell A2 to A5. Let's go ahead and add another cell. Go to the name manager, select product, click down here again. Now it selects A2 to A6. So the formula updates each time when you add the data. It's so amazing. Now, if you did not add dollar signs, if you did not make all of these references absolute down here, it will mess up. The second that you go here and look at the formula and then navigate away, it'll be completely broken, basically. Or it'll just change and not be what you want. Also, don't worry that this formula looks different than it used to look a moment ago when I pasted it in here. The name of the worksheet to which this formula refers has been added to it automatically by Excel. So that's what this dynamic formula means right here, just the name of this worksheet here. Now the lovely annoying part of this is that we need to go ahead and do this for every single column of data. So I paste it in here, B, 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 And again for D. So you can see this gets very tedious and is rather annoying. Now let's go ahead and finish up our named ranges. <laughs> to 
define name. Let's call it January. Okay. Don't worry about the values that it shows in the worksheet. This is not a typical worksheet function or formula. Okay, we've got all of these in here. Let's not delete them just yet in case I made any errors. And let's go over here. The easiest way to do this now is to first insert the table. So insert or insert the chart. Insert the chart. Let's zoom out a bit so it will fit on there. Move it over. You can see now that nothing will update. Now what you have to do here, select the chart, go to the design tab, select data. Now we have to put those named ranges in here for everything. So first we can go for the January column. You just click that, click edit. Don't change the series name, leave it like that. Go to the series values and you want to type equals single quotation mark, then the name of the worksheet, dynamic formula, single quotation mark, exclamation point, then the name. So we gave the named range for this one, January. You need to have the name of the worksheet, and if you have a space in the name, you need to have single quotes around the name of the worksheet. If you have a single word worksheet name, such as table over here, you don't need those quotation marks. But it's good practice to put them in because it won't hurt anything. However, if you forget them, for instance, with dynamic formula, it's not going to enter correctly. So we hit OK. Now we do the same thing for February. Dynamic formula. Let's delete that. February. Down here. Going to pop in March. Now let's go over here to get the product name so they will update. Hit edit. Go down here. Delete that. Product was the named range. Okay. Now everything should be good. Okay. Let's try it out. ASC 5. Now nothing's going to appear just yet, so let's input a number. Bam. Now the thing with this method is that it's not going to update for the columns. So if I add new column here, call it whatever, it's not going to update anything. So it's not as robust as the first method that I showed you, adding a table. But if your data table is not going to change, you're not going to be adding columns, it's a pretty mature data set, you're only going to be adding new values to the table, then it's not really going to affect you. So this is the way that you can make your chart dynamic using formulas. You're going to use the offset function combined with the count a function, most likely. Then you're going to go up here and store them as named ranges. And then you want to add the table and then update all the references to be those named ranges. So as you can see, it's rather involved. If possible, you should really use the table method. The dynamic formula method has a million different ways to mess up. This one is just so, so, so easy and amazing and lovely. Add your chart, select the data, click anywhere in it, go to insert, hit table, wham, bam, done. So that's how you can quickly and easily automatically update chart data in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.